Yeah, you don't need the arm. I'm very nervous. I'm, I'm not sure I'll remember the oath. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So we're going to do a real. Good morning. How are you? Uh, we'll delay my last. You got already Vasquez? Okay, how's that? Do you hear anything? Vasquez is clipping my camera. What this all means? This is on the cable then. How's the CNO sound on Divot side? Chris Ops, you're still live. Right now you're on only working camera. Sure, that'll give you a nice solid shot somewhere. Now, the court defends the Constitution. Hold that one. Four and Ready. Seek is ready. Shred is gone. Are you here on the TV? Alright, Chris out. And the officers of the camera from the internal mic to external. In accordance with regulations. Okay, ready, Chris out. I can need a little more headroom on this, Chris out. That's good. Alright, hold it. Freddie Chris up, taking Chris up, Chris up live. He looks like the oldest up here we started. Is that right? Chris up to me is very slow. Okay. 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 Ladelia. Ladelia. All right. Ready, Hi, Vasquez. Buddy. What's your name? Taking that. Louis? Hey, you're a junior? Okay. Oh, no kidding. Hi, miss. What's your name? Renee? Thanks. Yeah, I want to hold that here and come on in here. We'll get this picture. I need more pictures. Nice All right. All right. Ready, now, up. where did you and your wife meet? We met in high school. Actually. In high school? Yeah. At the library? Yeah. No? <laughs> At the Christian Science Reading Room. Is that good enough? <laughs> did, did they talk about that at home yeah, in front of you? All the time? Where <laughs> they met? <laughs> what do you do? Uh, personal trainer. Personal trainer? Where? Uh, in, in San Diego area or here? Or? Uh, Temecula. Temecula? Very nice. What a pleasure. Where are you from originally? Yeah. Renee? Oh, no kidding. Where are you from? Same. Originally? Oh, so you knew each other in high school? Yes, sir. So when you say, hey, let me tell you something, honey, whenever <laughs> I was in, you say, oh, wait a minute, you were there. That's not true, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's great to have you here. What a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hey, Senior Chief, how you doing? You got right, any family sir. here? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, what's your last name? Andrade. Andrade. <laughs> no, how do you say it? Andrade, that? sir. Andrade. Excuse me. Anybody want to claim Andrade? <laughs> All right, we got some. All right. Ah, oh, what a lovely sure. family. Hello, ma'am. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Good. Is this your son, son-in-law? This is my son-in-law. Son-in-law? He must be okay. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, we well, got four beautiful kids. Wow. Could we have their names? Rosie, Charlotte. Rosie, Charlotte. Eleanor, Ricky. Eleanor, Ricky. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Where did you all meet? Florida. In Florida? <laughs> Nobody's very specific about that here. Some clout out well, there. See, the father-in-law, he's always got the truth uh, of the matter. I gave you a coin, didn't I? No, sir. I didn't. Well, you were on probation. All right. Okay. That's for you. Sam, can you hold that? All right. Here you go, Charlotte. Here you go. Yeah, that, you stay away from Temecula with these things. I don't want you out there at the jamming out the, the, the machines and all that. So, sir, where are you from? Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida? And did you, did you two meet in Jacksonville, or in you Jacksonville? In high school. Man, that's <laughs> 40 years. 40 years. How about a hand? 40 years. <laughs> Congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. He's okay, isn't he? Yeah. You're going to keep him, yeah. I'm going to keep him. All right, we're going to keep him. Right, thank you so much, folks. Thank Thanks you so much. All right, yeah, what a great thing. You're a lucky man. Thank you, sir. Hey, Chief, how you doing? I'm good, sir. Do you have anybody here that with you? Yes, sir. My husband and my baby boy. Anybody want to uh, claim Chief Thomas here? Woo! All right. Chief husband and baby boy. <laughs> All right. Raise your roof there. For <laughs> here you go. Thank you so much. Where are you from? Rock Island, Illinois. Rock Island, Illinois. Hello. How are you? Are you from Rock Island, Illinois, too? Uh, actually, I was born in Jamaica. You are born in Jamaica? And what's this young codger's name? Uh, Nathaniel. 
Nathaniel? Man, I tell you, he's a healthy looking baby, isn't he? <laughs> All right, do you want to hold this and we'll uh, take a picture? Okay, we got one more here. She's still, I don't know, we're on video, I think. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're taking many. Uh, where'd you meet? Right here in San Diego. Actually on base. On base in class? Central Texas Hoff College. Oh, okay, excellent. So both uh, higher education, huh? Right, right. We use tuition assistance? Yes, sir. All right, right on. Tuition assistance, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. All right? Nice to meet you, buddy. Oh, wait. This one for him, too. I gave you one, didn't I? Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. I, that's why I had two in my hand. All right. Thanks, Major. All right. You up next? Good morning, sir. All right, Chief. Anybody here with you? Not today, sir. It's just you and I. We're, we're kind of slumming it, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Well, here's the coin. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute. we got to get the thing here. <laughs> Now we're at it, all right? All right, and where are you from? Uh, originally from El Salvador, sir. El Salvador originally? Yes. Yeah, and then uh, where did you move and where did you grow up then? Uh, Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, so right off the road, please, huh? Yes, sir. Very nice. Where are you, where are you stationed? Uh, Newby Ridge, Southwest. Okay, nice. You do funeral honors? Yes, sir. Boy, that's a tough job. Yes, and sir. Uh, unfortunately, you're busier than you need to be. Yes, sir. All right, well, thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you very much. All right, here we go. Cafaro, is that how you say it? Yes, sir. All right, nice yes, to see you. Do you, you got any family here? Yes, sir. Anybody want to claim Cafaro? <laughs> Going once. <laughs> All right. You notice they hesitated here. <laughs> Did you get any SRB for this for your last week? No, sir. All right. that, maybe that's it. <laughs> Did you get some money? I gave you a coin, right? Oh, no, sir. Oh, I didn't give you a coin? All right, well, you were on probation, too, I guess. There you go. Oh, my gosh, what a good looking young man here. Here you go. What's your name, sir? I'm Gabriel. Gabriel? And your name? Kirsten. Kirsten? Hi, miss. What's your name? Kiara. Kiara. And your name is? Brittany. Brittany. All right. So you know the drill. Where did you meet? I was All actually right. standard deviation, so she can't. Yeah. Can't see back. <laughs> she can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you know, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> I don't think people heard what you said. Where did you meet? In, in San Diego you met? Or so we, we actually met volunteering with the Boys and Girls Club. Volunteering with the Boys and Girls no. Club of? Of uh, Utah. Utah. Yeah. Very nice. All right, you want to look over there? He's going to take your picture. <laughs> You'll be able to, like, blot me out and use this for your Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, this is such a good-looking family. We've got to take them without me in it. Go ahead. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's yours. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for coming. Okay, uh, Premac, is that how you say it? Premac. Premac, sir. Premac. Uh, anybody, you have anybody here? I'm all by myself. Just all by yourself. All right, let me give you a coin for your poor guy. <laughs> all right, so where are you from? Brooklyn, New York, sir. Brooklyn, New York. How about them Mets, huh? They on their way? Yankees fan, sir. Yankees fan. Well, they did okay this weekend, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, they got work to do, though. You know that, right? <laughs> are, you big, are you a Rod fan? No, sir. Jeter. Jeter. Okay. <laughs> I tell you that he retires. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi, Peter Shalafton. Uh, do you have uh, family or friends here? Uh, no, sir. Only my NC. Your NC? Mm -hmm. You want to bring him or her down? Mm -hmm. NC. Where are you from? Cottonport, Louisiana. Cottonport, Louisiana. Cottonport. Cottonport. Uh, is that what's that name? Nothing. <laughs> Chief. Oh, yeah, I gave you a coin, didn't I? Yes, sir. Jeez, right. I gave your chief a coin. I give you a coin. Here you go. You. All right. You want to hold that for me? And uh, we have the chief get in here, and we'll take a picture. Okay, what do you do? I'm an engineer. Engineer? Oh, good job. On, uh, it's right there in your form. <laughs> on, uh, where's, where are you located? Uh, Naval Space Warfare under the Sixth Division Command. Very good. So you're hanging out with the SEALs? All right. They take care of you, don't they? they do. You feel safe, don't you? Yes, yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> nice to meet you. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, Carlson. Anybody? Do you have anybody here? Yes, sir. My parents. Your parents? All right. Here come the Carlson. They jumped right up, so you must be in good stead. <laughs> Let me give you the coin for him. Where are you from? Uh, Atsugi, Japan, sir. Atsugi? Yes. Ah, very nice. Hello. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? Hi, right, John Greener. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Um, where are you from? Um, actually, in California, from Denver, Colorado. Denver? Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. 
Sakura? Hello, oh, ma'am. Sonomi. Very nice to see you. I want to move over a little bit because he'll get, he won't like it. He'll be in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get points out. So uh, now this is your the father. father. Dean Carlson. Yeah, okay. <laughs> God, I'm going to tell you who these other folks are. I'll start guessing and I'll embarrass Sakura myself. Bowen, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Sonomi Carlson. Okay, I got all that. Well, come on in here, folks. We'll get a picture. Very nice. You got that? Yeah. All right, here's a coin. Thank you. Thank you. Is he all right? Yeah. You gonna, he's all right. He may be a keeper, but he's still on <laughs> probation, as they say, right? Yeah. We'll figure that out later. Nice to meet you, sir. We spent two tours in Yokosuka. So uh, there you go. Yeah, so, uh, I was on the Midway and then the, the Independence. Yep. Kitty Hawk. Yep. The Kitty Hawk, all yeah, the way through. Five small boys over there. Uh, I, a, few, uh, a few years there yourself. Just huh? a little bit. Did you go to high school at Kinnick then? Uh, I went to Zama. Zama, American High School, huh? Cool. That's a good school. All right, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Yes, sir, Lou, how are you, buddy? Do you, any, do you have any uh, friends or family here? Yes, sir, my wife. Your wife's coming? Here she comes. <laughs> Hello, how are you? My pleasure. All right, here's a coin for you. Yeah, just rub down. Lou, here you go, buddy. All right, now where did you two meet? Uh, Beijing, China. Beijing, China? Yes, sir. What were, you on a, what were you doing over there? Were you living there or what's... No. Um, <laughs> visiting? I was born in Beijing, China. You were born in Beijing, China. <laughs> and that was why I joined in the military. Yeah. And now my wife uh, there. In, in China. Yeah, in China. So you both came over yes. and uh, immigrated? Yes. Very nice. So is your family over here as well? Yes. Very nice. Where do they live? Uh, Oakland, California. Oakland? California? Okay. Why don't we step just a little bit this way and we get there. Good? All right. I gave you a coin, didn't I? All right. So where did you two meet? I know in the city, but what, like, what were you doing? Or you want that? Is that in the box? That's sealed in the box, <laughs> the vault. These people are dying to know. They, <laughs> they love it because they're maybe thinking, how do I meet a girl? There's a lot of guys out here. <laughs> University, you're studying? Okay, we heard that before. That's a good cover. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Mr. Cruz. Uh, uh, culture son? Yes. Is that how you say it? Or culture. it? culture son. Okay, do you have family or friends yes, here? My wife and my kids. Oh, great. Please come on down. Another nice family. You're a lucky man, aren't you? Okay, you want to move over just a little bit here. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. That's my coin. Do you know mine? Hi, kiddo. Hi. What's his name? Uh, Elijah. Elijah. And her name? Elisa. Elisa. Very nice little kids. Here we go. Everybody ready? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys have your own photographer. This is unbelievable. <laughs> All good? No. Nope. Okay. So, uh, you know what I'm going to ask you. Where did you meet? Uh, we met in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida? Yes. Um, it, it, uh, through a friend? Yes. Yeah, so the first time you met him, just say, oh, man, this is a man for me? Or did you say, uh, I actually, I wasn't interested at first. You weren't interested? <laughs> 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 I'm very yeah. persuasive. Uh, so you were relentless, persuasive, and all that, huh? Yes, sir. You could sell sunglasses <laughs> to <laughs> wherever, right? Very nice. All right, nice. Congratulations, and it's great to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not moving along as fast as you want, am I? <laughs> Manto, is that how you say it? Yes, sir. All right, nice to meet you. Do you have family or friends here? I do. Yes. All right. Excellent. That's a good first name. I like that. Here's your coin. And where are you from originally? From uh, Colleen, Texas, sir. Colleen? Yes. Nice to meet you. Hello. Uh, you claim him? Yes. All right. Hi, ma'am. How are you? My pleasure. I'm sorry? Kiong. Kiong. Nice to meet you. Hello, sir. How are you? A ranger, huh? With the Army, huh? But that's okay. We're joining this town. No, it's a big lie. We're all Navy town here, but please join us. Oh, wait a minute. i got to get the, Once you get in here, sir, and if you go ahead and get set up, i give the little kids. Hello. What's your name? Eva? Hello. What's your name? Milana. Milana? Very nice. I gave you a coin. I didn't give you. 
You're welcome. Sir, would you accept my coin? I'm From so uh, just a sailor to a ranger. Thank you, sir. Here we go. Uh, you're going to have to hold that over there by yourself. I'm uh, going to be on this side <laughs> of your parents. Nice to Now, where do you folks live? Texas, Colleen. So you yes. you you still live there where yes. you're from, okay? Yes. And you're over here for the uh, reenlistment. Yes. yes wow, all the way from that. Yes. You've got some pool, buddy. <laughs> John, well, it's great to see you. Thanks for nice. coming today. Thank you. Thank it's a pleasure. Thank you. Is it real? Real? Oh, do you have any uh, friends no. here? All right, you're, you're just gonna wing it with me. <laughs> huh? All right, here we go. Where are you from? Hagerstown, Maryland. Hagerstown, Maryland, of course. They've got a uh, outlets there, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Do you ever shop the outlets there? I work there. You work there? Where'd you work in? Uh, at the Gap. At the Gap? Yes, of sir. course. Do you get free uh, <laughs> clothes or a discount? Discount. Discount? Well, how much discount? I don't remember, sir. It was a long time ago. You don't remember? A long time ago. And did you spend a lot of money there? Yes. OK, very good. What do you do here? Um, I'm an FC, but I'm getting re-rated to FT. FT? Very nice. Um, to and then, and then out to sea somewhere. Yes, U.S. Michigan. Michigan. Oh, congratulations! I got enough coins. We'll just we'll go like this. All right, we're getting uh, a deal. Aguilar. Sir. Aguilar. Sorry. And I'm oh, when's Vincent? Is that yes, how you say? That run together. Yes, I do. Uh, you got a first and middle name all, the, all in one. Yes, sir. All right, you got any uh, family or yes, friends? Yes, I do, sir. I have two of my brothers in the military and my dad. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> We need more coins and a bigger boat. <laughs> you do love and support him. <laughs> so, how are you, ma'am? Here we go. <laughs> oh, those, I got them for everybody. Bah, we're never run out of coins. How are you, sir? Now, what, you're gonna have to help me out here. Hi, how are you, sir? I see it. I need one more. Okay. You're the dad. You're the make the the matri <laughs> patriarch. Excuse me. Nice to see it. So you look like a brother. Yes. All right. Yes. He's um, from the Marines and he's twelve. Very nice. Uh, and Maria. Oh, yeah, exactly. For the little girl. Oh, thank you. All right. And you have one. The kids don't have one. <laughs> he's he's gonna he's gonna win. So we got no time for that. Okay. You have to hold this as we gather up here and get a picture. Yeah, we got the. This is a joint family here. <laughs> All right, so where are we from? Chicago. Chicago. Everybody from Chicago? Uh, San Jose. San Jose. Very nice. Uh, my, my sister-in-law lives in Manteca, which is probably not that far. Okay. Uh, you too, San Jose? Uh, no, I'm from uh, Fallbrook, actually. Fallbrook, right around here. Right around right? here yes. Okay. Okay, so Chicago, here, yeah. San Jose. And okay, sounds good. Well, <laughs> thanks for joining us here today. It's great to have you here. You have a great family. You're a lucky man. All right, last and not least, is it uh, Gromick? Yes, sir. Okay. You have any uh, family friends? Yes, sir, my wife. All right. Here we go. Hello, miss. What's your name? Jamie. Jamie. Nice to see you. I gave you a coin, didn't I? Oh, I did, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, sir. My joke on probation is <laughs> lame. It's getting lame. I'm not going to use it again. Where are you from? Uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Sir. It's yours. Oh, okay. Santa Fe, New Mexico? Yes, sir. Are you from Santa Fe? I'm from San Diego. San Diego, so you met him here? I met him in New Mexico. It was a long story. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> I've used most of our time off, so maybe I'll just uh, defer that if you all don't right, mind. Sir. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. How about a hand for our real listies? If you don't That was quite a elaborate <laughs> show, wasn't it? Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. How's, how's our San Diego day going? Hi, Navy Day. You're doing good. Uh, hey, we are really pleased uh, today to have uh, the kid Jed Tino's here. Um, we're saying his brother in Pennsylvania, commanded Honolulu, the 7th Fleet, Fleet Forces Command, our 30th Chief of Naval Operations, the guy who's been putting fighting first for four years, and I 
think we've all seen the fruits of all of his efforts. Please uh, join me in giving a warm welcome to our 36th uh, uh, Naval Operations, Thanks, Admiral Tom. John Greener. Thanks, Tom. Admiral Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I think the one point I would want to make, I use a lot of times I make it last, is how important families are and friends are and siblings are to be, be able to be a sailor, to be able to do the things we do. We can't do it without family. And they are the wind underneath any wings that we have and we'll fly only as high as they do. Your wife, your mother and father, all of that that goes in your children. So keep that in mind. And for those of you that aren't here with your family, you get the opportunity, please thank them for me, for allowing you to be a sailor in my Navy and do the things you need to do. So I want to make just a few points, and most importantly, I want to listen and learn uh, what you have to say. So I've got just a few graphics. Danny, would you put the first one up to let you know? Uh, I showed this the first time I came in the job, and as I'm five weeks out from the end of my position, uh, because it's, it's not working, uh, and that, not that that hadn't happened before, it's really what we are about is where we are located around the world, day in, day out, to make sure that we can be there to influence things and to get done what needs to get done and then, of course, react uh, if something goes wrong. And in the past, uh, well, certainly in the four years I've been here and based on where a lot of you have been, whether you were with the Vincent Strike Group recently or you're going to be with somebody that's going to go out uh, in the not too distant future, it's because you were there with those units where it mattered and when it mattered that makes the Navy what it is today. In other words, it, it's value to the country. That's okay, Danny, I gotta move on. So don't worry about it. You didn't wanna see the picture anyway. It's something you already see in the, in the paper. Number two, uh, we are moving ahead with the what we call the optimized fleet response training plan. Uh, optimizing it, it's, it's the same fleet response training plan we've been working with for a long time. What we're saying is simply this. If we want this thing to be the best it can be, if we want it to work through the hard times, the good times, we have to make sure that we've got the capacity to do the maintenance, that we man the ships and the aircraft squadrons well ahead of time so that you can go out and train properly, that we don't do training, uh, that we don't clobber training and inspections, and that we make ourselves available when we're available, but we be clear with the, that's the, now it's my job, clear with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the Secretary of Defense, and the Geographic Combat Commanders that we can't just be out there 10 months, 8 months, 9 months. That's not going to work. It's not going to work for the ships. It doesn't work for the process. It doesn't work for you. And it can't work for you. We, we can't work that way. And so 7 months is where we need to be. Now right now, Theodore Roosevelt is up out there on an 8-month deployment. But the last two amphibious ready groups have been on seven-month deployments. Truman will leave on a seven-month deployment. And I fully expect Stennis will do a seven-month deployment. As we go forward in the years out there, and as, as we go with the Theodore Roosevelt out there, if she's out there and something goes wrong, we have to be where it matters when it matters. We have to respond. She could get extended. I'm, I'm not saying she won't. Uh, but the next pair of strike group should be there on time. It will be there on time. And, and the schedule for, for what we plan to do remains at seven months. And then lastly, at just a point, you've seen changes that are starting to come around in the personnel and personal program system. You've seen, hopefully you, you've taken the time, and if you haven't, you really ought to, go, go look and see what the Secretary of the Navy described at the Naval Academy a few months ago on changes to the personnel system. If you haven't done that, you ought to. It'll give you kind of a a lay down, a better understanding of where we're going in the future. We need to revise our personnel system. You all are our weapons, if you will. You're our best weapon system that we have out there. The system that manages you, if you will, the, the network that manages you is vastly outdated and we need to upgrade it. And that's the IT portion of it. But it's also the means in which we assign you. It's not responsive, it's too antiquated. And we tell detailers, here, go use this battleship to take on uh, a person and deal with the, the people of today who are very high tech and, and uh, a great weapon, the best missile we have in the whole battery, the best projectile we have in the whole battery, but our systems supporting you are antiquated. That's what we're doing. I think this is, uh, this is something I haven't seen in a long time from the perspective of the Secretary of Defense wants to do it, the Secretary of the Navy wants to do it, we want to do it, we've been trying to do this for a while, 
and the Congress is, rece is receptive to doing it. So I think you're going to be able, we'll be able to make some headway in this regard, from a better career and admission program to a better uh, way to do our boards, to a better way to do our assignments, to the ability to go active, to reserve back to active if that's the case, to be more responsive, have a better uh, pers uh, excuse me, personnel, uh, personal fitness assessment and, and all of that. So more on this as we develop. Somebody doesn't want these coins, I don't think. <laughs> uh, so let me take questions now. Let's go to uh, you know, the things that you're interested in talking about and we'll deal with what you're interested in. Yes, miss, you're ready to go. <coughs> Good morning, sir. Emma Love from Coastal River Group One Training and Evaluation Unit. Um, we've all heard status of maybe changing the dual BAH law or rules that we've had set in place. How is that going to affect a military family, uh, especially if they're trying to get into CBC? They have higher rates for the local economy. Um, is, is there any changes on that yet? Well, we don't like this change, and we've been very, I, I'll tell you how it'll affect it, it's not good. Uh, because if you have, if you've made um, personal fiscal uh, agreements with a whole host of things, from your mortgage to whatever, and I say, hey, guess what, we're gonna kinda take 35, 45, 60% of it away, I don't even know what it is, depends on who's and where, that's not fair. And the President of the United States has said that, and we've been very adamant about that. Um, I don't think it'll pass, and I'm, I'm not just sitting here and say, hey, Greener doesn't think it'll pass. I'm checking, and so uh, it won't be good if it passes. Uh, we don't think it's going to pass. Uh, we're dealing with it very deliberately, which means we're on it, to, to find out from the staffer who wrote it, what, what were you trying to do. Their comeback is when BAH was, was first originated, it wasn't meant, it was meant to be, have one allowance for housing, her family, and we say, okay, but that's not what you did. And so we are where we are, and we've been this way for years and years and years. Doing it like that is not the way to do it. There has to be, if a minimum, a period of adjustment so that our people can sort out their financial issues that, that this would cause. And it's totally contrary to all the other issues we've been trying to provide, the Congress that has been trying. So. We're fighting it pretty darn hard on this. I don't think it's the right way to go, and my fellow chiefs feel the same way, the Secretary of Defense, everybody in the DOD. Okay. Who's next? Good morning, sir. Hi, um, I'm AZ3 Lopez from the USS Macon Island. Sir, I just have a quick question, personally wise, about um, junior enlisted sailors who hope to one day become commissioned officers. What would one piece of advice that you could give uh, fellow sailors like myself, um, just in hopes to become you know, well, something greater. I'll greater. tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what the Mick Pond tells everybody, and, and he, tell, he said it in this auditorium, and it applies, I tell my flag officers this. Number one, work hard every day in whatever job you're given. If you're, if you're a food uh, service attendant, or if you're cleaning and you're doing whatever, you work hard every day and, and you'll, you'll, your bosses will see that you're a reliable person with integrity and worthwhile. Number two, stay out of trouble. You know, because if you got trouble on your record, just say, well, what's this mean? And what do we think this person will be like in the future? And then lastly, be a decent person. Be a good shipmate. Respect and uh, have, have dignity and respect for others. And you say, okay, that's nice. Give me all that cornball stuff and I'll tell me the, the real deal. That is the real deal. That will reflect on your record and you'll show yourself a person of great integrity. Now, if you say, well, what else can I do? Well, you probably ought to start looking at, if you want to go to an officer program that requires you know, college and all that, you got to get into college. You have to have a good background. If you want to go uh, uh, seaman to admiral, you know, at SA-21, then, then you have to work on just exactly that, C or uh, NC. Thank you, sir. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, it's not true, so it makes it easy for you. Admiral Richardson was selected to be my, first of all, he's confirmed, so, I mean, he's out right now writing all his vision statements and whatever he's going to do. He's ready to go. Um, 
he was chosen by the Secretary of Defense uh, among a list of very viable, qualified candidates, at least three, at least three, uh, and, and he accepted them. So it really has little or nothing to do with the Ohio replacement. It's about the, the right person for the right time for, uh, for our Navy and one program alone, which by the way, you ever see little kids' soccer ball games, right? Yes. And the ball goes over there and all the little kids run after it? We're not all running after the Ohio replacement. It is the number one program for us to, to, uh, to recapitalize our sea-based strategic deterrence. It's very important, it's number one, but it isn't everything. So that would, that's not the way we did it. Thank you for putting that on your bed, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. One, sir, CTR2, Sean Bridger from the USS Samson. My question is in regards to a potential future threat with North Korea developing its nukes and continuing to develop its ballistic missile program. What's the Navy's concern of North Korea employing its nukes in an EMP-based weapon that may have high atmosphere over Japan to disable our forces or some sort of threat? Well, um, that's a pretty complicated uh, weapon, electromagnetic pulse. So you, you gotta launch it, it's gotta be miniaturized enough, you gotta know, you gotta be good enough to explode it in the atmosphere to get a pulse, right? Rather than having a thermonuclear explosion, which is, both are bad, right? So uh, I don't see that as a viable threat now. Uh, if you wanna talk about a decade, I guess that's feasible, but we would be all collectively remiss to sit around and just watch it evolve and develop and get there. So I will tell you this, it's in the classification of the room, I can't get into detail. There's a lot of work going on countering the potential launch development and all that for North Korea's nuclear weapons and others. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Juan Lemonsi from MC Rescue Command. My question to you is, how does the Navy plan on balancing the demand for future strategic assets like the Ohio replacement project and current war fighting well, the, uh, the budget may shrink, and uh, I don't know that it'll shrink, but it won't grow. We'll, we'll probably be fortunate to get what we have. And the Navy's plan is to say, uh, we want to show you, that would be uh, the Congress and uh, the Department of Defense staff, this is what your shipbuilding plan would look like if we took all of the money to pay for the Ohio out of the shipbuilding plan. And they said, well, I don't wanna do that. Say, well, aircraft plan, modernization plan. So we've showed many ways that how this will impact the other programs. And they're not good, it's not pretty. To say, is this the Navy of one of the future? We need to have that debate. And that's what's going on now back in the, in the Pentagon. These are, this is the implication, this is the accountable pro, uh, in, result of this and the consequences. And we're having that discussion right now. So let me say that right now the Navy is, is we are prepared to do it, because we've got to fund this thing, but number, but number two, but most important, I'd say, is we don't want to do it, and we don't think the DOD really wants to do that, that it's in their best interest. And I think we, that's what we're trying to describe to them so we get a balanced approach to this. I should tell you, the Ohio, we're all sailors here, so we, we think and talk about the Ohio. But right after the Ohio is the, the B-2 bomber and that process, that needs modernized. It's time, it's decades old. And then right in around that time, the ICBMs out there, those processes and those networks, they need upgraded. Our missile, and you know, it's 20 years out, some of you say, ah, 20 years. Well, it's right around the corner in some terms. The missile needs to be upgraded, the booster and all that goes with it. So we have a national nuclear, strategic nuclear modernization challenge over the next 20 years. It starts with the Ohio replacement, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Morning, sir. Kim Kuninak from the USS Calvins. If we are prolonging pregnancy leave for females on sea duty, what are we doing as it treats the ship with boys? Well, what, what you're doing, you're talking about the leave, that's what's authorized. When it is taken would be up to the individual, uh, and that's your entitlement as, as an individual. How that is done is not written in there, and that would have to be kind of case-by-case -case basis. But that's your entitlement of 18 total weeks, and that's, that's really the deal that we're describing, or that's the, uh, how do I say that, the entitlement, as I said before, that you have. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.
morning, Zeno. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ed Stu Jackson from Enphase. I'll be asking you the questions that come up online. Oh, good. Okay. So this is in uh, out there in internet land, huh? This is correct. Okay, sir. great. All right. This one actually relates pretty closely to the question <clears> that you just asked. This is from Sarah Terse. And, sir, are there any plans for the military to subsidize egg freezing for women to mirror the benefits offered from the private sector? No, not now, but uh, I don't know that that's even been discussed. I think that would have to be something that so, someone needs to bring forward and say, well, you know, we had to discuss this as uh, a, uh, it'd probably be a benefit more than anything. It sounds very medical in nature, and then somebody has to subsidize that, huh? So we need to look and see if that would be, uh, like I said, an entitlement within the medical care. That would be DOD-wide, obviously. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Wine one parent with Campbell Bay San Diego. Uh, touching back on maternity leave, with the in increase in days for women to take maternity leave, will there also be an update for paternity leave coming out? Yeah, that's, they, uh, there might be. Uh, and I'd say that because maternity leave is based upon the welfare of the mother. <clears throat> and it's a uh, very kind of, if you will, medical involved, so bodily recovery. Paternity leave has a different approach to it. And it is actually government-wide. It's uh, the, the underlying governing authority is the federal government. So that's a broader uh, area. So that, that will take much longer to reconcile should they choose to do that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, welcome to San Francisco Campus. Thank Club. you. Uh, and so I'm Blake from the USS Pinkney. Uh, we're currently in the BAE shipyard. Just put our ship back in the water on Friday. Thank goodness we're able to go back out to the fight. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing that up. That's fair enough. Because I was waiting, to, hoping to hear from the fleet on that uh, from sailors. The Admiral Davidson, who uh, commands Fleet Forces Command, when he brought forward the current budget proposal, uh, came forward with what you said. Number one, he said uh, we need to recapitalize our barges. So that means build more ones, build new ones. Excuse me. And number two, we need to refurbish the ones we have so that today, if we started building barges, the first barge would be ready and. 18. So we need to revitalize those that we have. So we're going to address that in this budget. Uh, I don't, can't tell you to what level, but uh, yes, there is a budget line and it, it deals with uh, barges, repair barges, living barges, support barges, all that stuff. And uh, we need to address it. So let me just say the fleet, your fleet leadership is uh, representing you in this. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. So the Lake Champlain? Yes, sir. A cruiser? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I don't know. Tommy, maybe you can help me. I thought we've had women on cruisers. We have uh, female we have, officers. We have okay. Uh, I don't know that, that uh, the crew, you're saying we, the crew, the male crew, are being uh, trained, if you will, or indoctrinated. Does that sound right? Yes, sir. Okay. And your question is, will the females that are coming on board be trained? Yes, sir. I don't yes, know. I'm HR, fresh out of A school, coming in. Right. She has many questions and stuff like that. But right. The male sailor, and she has women specific questions. Yeah. I am not. I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> to answer those questions. Okay, so here's the deal. I, I, I have somebody that writes down all the questions, and they don't know anybody's name. They just write down the questions. And uh, let me go back and ask the Chief of Naval Personnel what the plan is for that. We'll work with 
Admiral Rob and, and, and your surf for. Okay? Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Anyone Sorgi, GPU, 32nd Street. Uh, I've got a question with regards to FEMA's task force command. Um, is there any other plans in place to, as we enlist more females into incident Navy and expand our horizons, such as where we're able to be stationed, is there any other plans? For example, I as an AO would like to go to an HSL style platform, but I am limited because of the berthing accommodations on the small platform. So what plans, if any, have in place to try and get us to expand our service to broader command. Uh, so you're not talking about just getting in. You're saying, yeah, I got that. We're already on board, but we're not we're not on board in certain areas or function areas or skill sets, for lack of better terms. Does that sound right? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, let me take that one back too, because I, this I know the the bureau said uh, and was told just what you said. We are going to want to increase the Naval Academy class that's in today. It has the largest female population, uh, running over 25%. You know we want to expand, and we need to bring more women in the Navy. Uh, so putting them, two things. One, more consistently on different platforms so that we don't have all-male crews out here, and then another one with you know sometimes 30 40%. Uh, and then, of course, we've got to get them in the, the different skill sets. I need to take that back, but that's a good question. All right. Sir, Lieutenant J.C. Martyr. Uh, with the loom reduction, Yeah, your first one was a reduction in forces, you say? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I need to address that because your Navy, this Navy is growing. Uh, I don't know if you know that. We're about 325,000 today. We're going to be close to 330,000 by the end of the decade. We, we man equipment, and our equipment is going up. So uh, had we shown the slide I was going to show, it showed 273 ships, and I think we have two more frigates that will retire. And now we're going to get literal combat ships coming in at four a year, and we're going to still have two submarines a year coming in. We're still building two destroyers a year, so your Navy will grow. But to your question, the, uh, as the, uh, uh, I guess really the worldwide missions that start to expanding, particularly with ISIS and Al Qaeda, uh, and maybe our, our increased interest or, um, or employment, perhaps in the Middle East, IAs. I'd say it would be on the margin, and it would be specific skill sets, logistics, medical, uh, some planners, cyber, but I don't see uh, nothing like you saw before, uh, say in the middle of the uh, Iraqi campaign or the high point of the Afghanistan campaign. Okay? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Alice Wood Fenton from LCS1, the Total Combat Ship Squadron 1 here in San Diego. Um, my question is specifically towards the LCS program. Yeah, as you said, we are having more ships come out every year. Mm -hmm. And as being a part of the staff having to support 1,500 plus PCUs, crews, and vets, will there ever be an increase, hopefully sometime soon, specifically as an LS, uh, with having more people supplied on staff to be able to support all the people that we have coming in to support the new ships as they come online? That's a lot of support. <laughs> Tom. Sir, um, right now, this is a great question, and right now we have initiated a review of the support of the ships. Because I, I, and I've been talking to Commodore Buller, and I know how hard you all are working just to take care of the ships that we have. And as we roll out for a year in the future, one of the things that I've initiated is to go back and say, all right, let's take a look at this. Now that we've got some, uh, got some uh, water under the keel, how do we need to modify the support in order to make sure that, A, you're not overworked, and more importantly, we properly take care of those ships as we uh, prepare and then deploy them? So I'll pass it on to my fellow LSs, and I'm sure we'll be like, yes! <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, you also remember what he said, and hold him, hold him accountable. <laughs> and that's all of us. Yeah, that's right. That's all of us in, in that regard. OK, who's up? Over here? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Chief Assistant Hunter from USS Lake Champlain. Uh, I have a question in regards to the USS James E. Williams um, regarding the, uh, the incident that occurred last year when they were on deployment. Um, my question is, if the CO, XO, and CMC 
fails to resolve the command's issue, whether from big to small, what do you expect or how should the blue shirts, the chiefs, and the officers, what should they do to intervene? And well, to, and to re well let's, not, let's not use uh, that a ship. I understand. You gave me an example. So let's just take ship X. And we'll talk about what I would expect. Is that good, good enough for you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, first of all, you, you have to have integrity, number one. Uh, you have to always tell the truth so that when you tell me something, you tell me this boat's ready to go, the small boat's ready to launch, I launch the small boat. And I know that you took care of all the checklists. Guns ready to fire, missiles ready to launch, you get my point. Helos ready to launch. I got to believe you. And if there's, if there's a breakdown there, we got huge trouble if you have to check on what I say. So that's kind of one. If I know that you're always going to tell me the truth and, and it's going to be straightforward, then I can trust you. I can trust that my life will be in good hands, your hands, because we're all in each other's life, uh, hands. Excuse me. So if we start trusting each other uh, in an environment that I call an environment of dignity and respect, you just respect me and, and we treat each other with dignity, then we'll be pretty. Mu then you can start growing in that environment. So you say, yeah, but I got lousy leadership here. They're not. They're not getting it done. They're not dealing with the problems. Well, I expect the chief's quarters to to confront the CMC and say, you're not getting it done. You are a representative. I would expect uh, if if the uh, con the wardroom can have a conversation with the executive officer and cannot have a conversation with the commanding officer, then they may need to go to that squadron and say, I got a problem on board. The squadron hears this, you know, the ISIC in, in, uh, senior, next senior in, in command. Uh, they should send people down and say, what's going on on this vessel and kind of get a sense for the culture. Am I making sense to you? Yes, so people need to step up because there are certain things you are owed. You're owed the integrity, you're owed the trust, you're owned a con you owe you are owed a uh, a uh, culture, if you will, or an environment of dignity and respect, uh, and so also you you're owed leadership, and my job is to put those leaders in there, make sure they are trained to do it, but not everybody will get that done, and people will fail, and when that happens, the entire crew can't suffer because of an inability to deal with it. So yeah, I, I expect people to confront the issue, once again with dignity and respect, and there are processes in place to do it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Hello again, sir. Sends it to you again. Uh, <laughs> you answered most of the questions that we had online so far. There's only one more, and I'm not going to ask it how it was phrased here because it's pretty incendiary. So I'm just going to ask what the basis of the question is. And that is Well, the, yeah, the, uh, the study is just about done that we asked Naval Special Warfare to do, uh, which is to go determine, number one, what are your standards for people to join Naval Special Warfare, to be a SEAL? And, and contain, review that and see, does this standard make sense? Is it a good standard? That has been done. And that was done with a very competent authority, very objective look. Uh, I took the brief from Amalosi, and so did the Secretary of the Navy. Number two, if that is a good standard, why isn't it a good enough standard for anybody? And as we go forward, we're not done yet. We haven't declared that we're done. But I see no reason to say, here are our standards. Who wants to be a SEAL? You've got to meet the standard. Because these standards are foundationally put in place and proven in, in a whole host of uh, of missions and background, including not just SEALs and Naval Special Warfare, but Special Operating Forces, DOD-wide. Uh, why aren't they just the standard? You meet the standard, you're in. And uh, frankly, that's the path that we are headed down. But we're not done yet. We, we, have to, we have to integrate that into the broader Special Operating Forces, if you see what I mean. And then we have to check and say, does that conclusion affect the Army, Special Forces, Air Force, Special Forces, Marine Special Forces? And if so, we've got to reconcile that. And that's where we are. Yes, sir. Yes? Good morning, sir. MAM 10 personnel with Naval Base San Diego. Uh, my question is in regards to return to duty for uh, new fathers. Right now, it's currently 10 days. Is there any way since females got extended, if males are going to be extended as well? 
Well, I th this the paternity leave is the topic, really, and uh, the answer is we don't have the authority in the Navy to, to do that. Uh, it is a federal standard uh, because it doesn't involve uh, – see, women in the Navy versus women in other services, the, their ability – one's ability to recover and go back to work depends on the job they're in and what we're asking them to do. We go to sea. So if we think 18 – uh, months is, or 18 weeks is appropriate then to, in order to fully recover for sea duty, and that's what we believe. But the paternity aspect of it is more deemed to be, it's not medically based, if you understand what I mean, in returning to work. So therefore, it's, that's why it's federal wide. So I'll go back, uh, I'll go back and ask again, so what, you know, is there a plan in the federal government to take another look at this? Okay. Good morning. Ten years from now. All right. Let's see. Ten years from now, 2025, uh, we should have all of that under construction by then, for sure. Uh, we'll be very close to. No, we will have this many frigates in in the fleet by then. Yeah, on deployment, frigates, that would be the, the last 20 that will have the systems on board. We talked about it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. New missile, better uh, electronic warfare and all that. So uh, by then, we had to have our small surface combatant uh, type, ship type class, fully embedded, distributed. We'll have a, uh, a squadron or two in Bahrain. We'll have at least four and maybe more. I think we'll have more, be my prediction, for lack of a better term, in, uh, in the Western Pacific, uh, Sasebo and, uh, and down in Singapore. Uh, and then, of course, on both coasts. Uh, and I think they'll be elsewhere around the world. I think other countries will have the sea frame. So you look out there and say, hey, look, it's an independence class. And I say, well, not exactly. It's been you know, modified for that country. That's what I would foresee out there. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, sir. Uh, Senior Chief Aguilera from Mission 749. Um, earlier you spoke on personnel and the changes coming with CMSID and all that good stuff. Let me tell you why Brian Oster that I am a big fan of the base detailing. Thank you. Uh, my question in regards is we speak to Manning and FRTP. Uh, Manning and FRTP Okay, so your expeditionary, you, that would lead me to believe that you do deploy, or you say, no, I don't really. I mean, yes, sir, we deploy uh, independent detachments on board. Okay, board. so you have not, if not the FRTP, as we know and love and, and we talk about a lot, you have a process to prepare for deployment, right? Yes, sir. I, I would expect you're supposed to be manned at a certain level uh, as you prepare to deploy and a, and, and a level uh, full-time because you could be called up. And if you are not, if you're three of eight, is that the right number? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know where that shows in, your, in our defense readiness reporting system, but if, it's, uh, if you are you know, C or M4, uh, then somebody ought to be saying that's a problem, and so that's a problem for me. That feeds in, we know we don't have enough PRs in the Navy. If I, if I have an accurate reporting system that comes up, then we're not fleet-wide you know, we don't have the right fit or fill fleet wide, and we got to break it down to individuals because I didn't want to. I wouldn't want a small skill set to get lost in the macro numbers. I'd say report it. You know, uh, report your unit's uh, true readiness level is is the way the system will react. Hi, sir. Okay. Manny is going to. Scheduling. 
No, shouldn't reflect. I mean, it's a. Uh, we, we will man our units in order to uh, enable the units to function, uh, I don't know how to say it, other than appropriately. And uh, that's something we've learned. It's the school of hard knocks a little bit for us. We're standing hard and fast on that. Rather than having a, you know, a gaggle of people in the Navy and then we see how many can fit on the ships, we're very clear. We've done a lot of hard work and a lot of scar tissue to said, no, that won't work, that, that efficiency doesn't work anymore. If we need to find efficiencies, we've got to go find it somewhere. As I you know, said before, uh, and I was talking about uh, changing how we manage people and all that, in this room, sitting in these seats, is the most powerful weapon system we have. I'm not trying to be corny or dramatic. I've just seen it after a long, long time of ups and downs. And uh, in the world we're in, in the future, we've talked about changing missions, asking people to do different things. We have to make sure that we are managing them well and they are, they are well managed, uh, you know, if that makes sense to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bottom line, okay? Thank you, sir. Hello. How you doing, sir? Good. This is Dave Cooper from the USS Princeton. I have a question uh, regarding the ships, uh, in particular the cruisers. A lot of the cruisers are on the list for decommissioning, uh, the Calpins is being mothballed. However, the Princeton is fortunate enough to have received latest and greatest uh, cruiser technology. I was wondering if that will be a trend to continue or will we see an end of the uh, cruisers in the near future? Well, I'll answer your question directly. You ain't gonna see the end of the cruisers in the near future, okay? But here was the plan. I, I know what you're saying and uh, one person's modernization process is another person's uh, uh, mothball, no, it is another person's decommissioning. Uh, we did. We have 22 cruisers, right? 11 of them are modified, are modernized, and that's good. We're going to get the other 11 modernized, and that how we did that in the most uh, cost-effective manner, one, two, uh, manner to get them modernized as fast as feasible, given the shipyards we have out here. Three, make sure that we that we manage the cruisers so they can last as long as feasible. So let me put it another way. If I have a cruiser that isn't modernized, so you're in the Princeton, it's modernized. It's pretty hot stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Compared to what it was? Oh. Yeah, okay. There is no comparison, right? So if I steam your ship around unmodernized, uh, I'm taking life from it. I'm using up life from it. If I can hold that ship, okay, and everybody else kind of hang on here, I'm going to hold the ship up a little longer, then put it in for modernization, I get those years back just sitting still if I preserve it properly while it's waiting to go get modernized. That was the process we were using. The Congress said, I don't like that process. I don't want you tying up any ships for any period of time unless they're in the shipyard. I want them in the shipyard and out of the shipyard. So we've been going back and forth with them saying, easier said than done. I got this many shipyards. You know, I got this many ships, if you will. They don't, you get my point. So we're, we're into this debate with them. Does that make sense? So we don't want to re we don't want to decommission any of these. We want to use them as long as feasible. We want to get them modernized on a on a tempo that makes sense. Okay, that's where we are. All right, are there any more? Or does that mean he's last? That's it, sir. He's it. Okay, let me give you one last uh, thought. I want to talk about cyber for just a minute. Uh, we are having a series of events uh, in Washington. If you have a friend that is a works at a NIOC or anything, uh, when you lay your head in your pillow tonight, you might want to say a little prayer for them. They are working hard. Uh, we are constantly under, if you will, cyber attack or probe right now. You all are. We all are. And you all are cyber warriors. You need to understand that. If you work on a combat system, if you work on a network, if you work on anything where you go in and you sign in and you come up, you need to realize that, please. You have to. You have to pay attention to your password. You have to pay attention to, don't be plugging in and charging things up. I mean, I, I, it still happens today. If somebody says, hey, check this picture of my cat. It's on this link. Uh, it doesn't belong on Nippernet. It doesn't belong on Sippernet. Uh, and those things, those links that you get from somebody you may or may not recognize, even if you recognize it, that could contain ma malware. Today, when I, when I say, you know, we are fighting like crazy to extract and excoriate and throw out 
people who are delving into our networks, it's almost always happening because somebody let them in. Somebody just couldn't help themselves clicking on that link or actually work to click on the link to bypass some of the preventions that were in place. We really, really need to step up our cyber game as individuals uh, as we continue to build a defense in depth to put the kind of programs in there to help throw these folks out, you know, the, the hackers out. And they're nation state, they're definitely nation state, but they are also individual. So this is going to become a bigger and bigger issue. Your network, your station is a combat system. And any way that, that you let anybody in, it goes rampant out there and it's a huge problem. Please remember that. Take care of each other. It's been my pleasure serving with you. I will miss you all, but I'm moving on. And it's been a pleasure working with you. Somebody's going to come on and you will continue to make us the greatest Navy in the world. Thank you very much. So long. Okay, bye. Where are we going? Thanks. Thanks for helping out.